good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this morning about the use of serum biomarkers in uh, neovascular age-related macular degeneration. Excuse me. Poor timing. <coughs> Macular degeneration it is, is a disease that affects the macula, um, causing primarily, uh, primarily change and loss of, of central vision. And as we can see from this Ampler grid, as the disease progresses, this uh, loss of central vision can be, um, can be quite dramatic and, and devastating for the patient. It's the leading cause of irreversible blindness uh, in patients over the age of 50 in the Western world. There are two primary sub subtypes of macular degeneration. First, the dry subtype, uh, which is usually associated, not associated with uh, visual uh, loss. And then this can progress to wet or neovascular uh, macular degeneration, which is uh, essentially associated with uh, formation of new blood vessels and can cause loss of vision. Roughly a quarter of all patients over the age of 75 some features of AMD, and 80% of, uh, of those individuals do have, um, it looks like it's cutting off just the bottom of my slide here, but 80% uh, have dry AMD and are, are at risk of progressing to uh, neovascular disease. Now, how does this uh, disease progress? Degenerative changes um, that are, again, usually not associated with visual loss begin with the accumulation of extracellular proteins and, and lipids uh, called drusen that, um, that form within the retina in different layers at Bruch's membrane, the RP, and also at uh, photoreceptor interfaces. And as this is a disease of progression, uh, about 50% of individuals with extensive um, macular drusen will progress to geographic atrophy or neovascularization within five years. And these are considered late changes in the disease and can be vision threatening. So the, the characteristic uh, of the onset of neovascular age related macular degeneration, uh, it's associated with an acute vision loss that can be permanent uh, if left untreated. NVAMD uh, represents 90% of all blindness caused by AMD. And as we see in this graphic, <coughs> dry AMD uh, begins with drusen formation causing ret uh, thinning of the retina and this can progress to abnormal blood vessel formation which uh, can break through Bruch's membrane causing uh, vision loss. In terms of risk factors for, th for the disease, uh, it's all in the name, age related. Age is the uh, most prominent demographic risk factor whereas environmental risk factors, uh, the, the most prominent of which is uh, cigarette smoking, which represents a two to three fold increase uh, in, in risk compared with non-smokers. This is related uh, to dry and wet macular degeneration with a stronger correlation to wet. High blood pressure as well as overexposure to sunlight um, are also risk factors, as well as diet, <coughs> uh, diets that are high in fats, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, as well as high linoleic acid have, can double the risk of wet AMD, whereas uh, in contrast, low linoleic acid and diets high in omega-3 fatty acids um, can lower the risk. So just another reason to choose the fish at lunch today rather than the Twinkie or other kinds of foods. Um, genetics has also been found to play an important role in AMD. There have been 19 loci that have been identified uh, to date. And these genes uh, regulate a number of different physiologic processes from complement activity, lipid metabolism, uh, matrix remodeling, as well as angiogenesis. And uh, one of the most prominent uh, and strongly associated uh, genes is the ARMS2, also called the HTRA1 locus, which is thought to be involved in matrix stability. Additionally, a, a strong uh, correlation between uh, uh, genetic lo locus and um, AMD is the mutational change of the CFH um, molecule involved in innate immunity. There are two VEGFA polymorphisms that are thought to contribute to AMD susceptibility, as well as the KDR gene, uh, the VEGF receptor 2, uh, 
um, that may also uh, correlate with an increased risk of AMP. But this relationship is, is unclear at this time. In comparison with genetic um, risk factors, serum biomarkers uh, are less well categorized. There are numerous different sero, uh, serologic bio biomarkers that have been identified, to name a few. Elevate elevations in inducible co-stimulator, MDA, superoxide dismutase, LDL, EFF, D2, and homocysteine. The, the most well understood and well studied uh, serum biomarker is uh, by far and away is CRP, uh, which can be a non-specific biomarker elevated in a number of different conditions, um, including uh, temporal arteritis. But a recent meta-analysis meta um, has shown that high levels of CRP are associated with a twofold increase in late, uh, in the likelihood of having late AMV. Now, it, this, this here says elevated serum VEGF receptor 2 uh, is also uh, a potential serum biomarker, um, but this relationship is not well understood at this point, um, as this is a monomeric molecule and is not, uh, does not have a high VEGFA. So veg, VEGF has, uh, is well understood to have a very important role in the pathogenesis as well as the treatment of NDAMD. And um, SFLT1 is a molecule um, that <coughs> binds and sequesters VEGF, uh, thus reducing its angiogenic activity. So SFLT1 is anti-angiogenic. SFLT1 is, uh, is the subject of, uh, of what my group studied, and it was found uh, that, the R that RP in the RPE, um, SFLT1 is, is required for subretinal vascular denaturation, as well as in patients with uh, NVAMD, SFLT1 is, is decreased in the RPE. Um, a knockout, a recent study showed that knockout of S SFLT1 in the RPE did show spontaneous choroidal neovascularization. Now, SFLT1 can be found in the serum. It can be measured in the serum. So that brought the question of <coughs> if uh, it can be me measured in the serum, does uh, SFLT1 also decrease in, in patients with uh, NVAMD as was previously seen in the RPE uh, as well as in the serum? as either a byproduct or a cause of the, of the condition. And so this, uh, we performed a study in which 205 patients from uh, Belfast, Ireland were, uh, had their serum SFLT1 um, measured. And it was found that SFLT1 was significantly decreased uh, in these patients compared with early AMD and, and their controls. Uh, also of clinical importance, uh, there's a stepwise correlation between SFLT1 levels and uh, the risk of developing AMD. For each 10-point increase in SFLT1, <coughs> the odds of having NVAMD uh, decreases by 27%. We also found that in patients over 73 uh, with SFLT1 levels less than 80, there's a six-fold uh, higher risk of developing NVAMD. And we see here uh, in this box and <coughs> line and box graph that in fact SFLT1 level uh, concentration is significantly decreased when compared with non-AMD and early AMD. Uh, also this graphic uh, that indicates an estimation of probability uh, of risk of, of progression to NVAMD from early AMD. This finding in reduced AMD is, uh, does have a pathophysiological link that, uh, that makes quite a lot of sense. Uh, in terms of F FLT1 is the highest affinity receptor for VEGFA, and it has two different, um, two different isomers. There's SFLT1, or soluble uh, FLT1, and membrane-bound FLT1. And the unique characteristics of uh, FLT1 in that it has six rather than seven extracellular IgG-like domains, no transmembrane domain, as well as no tyrosine kinase, um, <coughs> allows it to be soluble and free to interact with VEGF, uh, thus blocking its 
VEGF's interaction with uh, the receptor and, and preventing angiogenesis. Whereas when uh, SFLT1 is reduced or absent, VEGF is uh, free to interact with the receptor and angiogenesis progresses. So in summary, SFLT1 um, in neovascular AMD uh, patients here uh, has, was found to be reduced compared to earlier indications in, in controls. And so uh, we, we understand that SFLT1 is likely to be associated with the development of neovascular AMD. Although uh, I have to say that uh, we, can't, we can't necessarily um, determine causality in regard to uh, SFLT1 because it's uncertain whether or not the decrease in SFLT1 uh, is, uh, it precedes um, or is a consequence of neovascular AMD. Uh, but however, there is a, there does seem to be a very strong correlation uh, in patients over the age of 73 with SFLT1 reduction in that um, they have a dramatically increased risk of uh, observed effect was not uh, affected by age, gender, or smoking history, and the sample of 205 patients was, was not large enough uh, to look at interactions with different screen loci. So as we look forward to the future of management of AMD, uh, there are likely to be serologic panels um, that will be designed, including CRP, eotaxin 2, and homocysteine, uh, and, and possibly SFLT1. And these could be very, uh, very uh, clinically to be able to, whether it be home monitoring or more close clinical, uh, clinical observation, to uh, have earlier detection, earlier diagnosis, uh, leading to, to earlier intervention, and, uh, and possibly preventing vision loss from the onset uh, of NDAMD. I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Hiro Uehara uh, for his significant contribution to this work as well as um, Dr. K uh, Chikavarthi and Nicole from uh, Belfast, Ireland for um, helping with, uh, with samples and Dr. Bala Ambani. Any questions? <laughs>